How's it going guys? My name is Matt, you're watching MTG Owner. Just want to do a little bit of a tournament report. I played in the BCDL Open with a reanimator list and thought I'd talk about my experience, the deck, and a couple other things and maybe just try to make a bit of an entertaining video for you. So I'm going to throw in some jump cuts. Uh, we're going to look at the deck. Uh, one game did get recorded on a highlight, not the most, not the best game on my behalf, uh, but we'll go over it anyway and I'll talk about what happened there. I played all seven rounds and uh, didn't make it in the top eight or anything, but I very well could have if I played a tiny bit better because, uh, you know, there were just, you know, there were a couple matchups, very specific matches where I made little tiny mistakes, but you know how that goes with magic, especially competitive, one little tiny mistake can into a game loss, which puts you in a bad placement where you would have uh, otherwise not necessarily been so it happens uh, but yeah I'm gonna be honest with you guys and give you a, the report let's go all right so here is the deck list I went with now first I want to just give a shout out to my uh, friend Sean and my friend Ryan for letting me borrow a few cards to complete the deck in time to actually make the tournament uh, so you know who you are couldn't have even competed with this deck list otherwise all right so here's my deck list it was a reanimator list it's kind of a wonky reanimator list i did a lot of very little custom optimization that was really trying to uh gear towards the meta of what's going on but as you can see here uh well it doesn't really say it properly but basically okay so i played seven games right i played all seven games of the tournament i played against delver seven times seven times delver that was that was my matchups like and delver didn't only like one or two delvers even made the top 16 i just played delver non-stop non-stop it was driving me crazy after a while actually i was just like just just someone let me play something else i don't want to play against delver anymore well there was maybe one deck that wasn't delver but we didn't really play long enough for me to find out because i killed him so quickly but that's the way it goes sometimes with this deck all right so i'll talk about more about the individual games and we'll, we'll go over that shortly but i just want to talk about the deck list it's, it's a really odd choice and i have a few regrets here i learned a lot from this tournament i don't play online legacy a ton so i'm not like grinding every day like most legacy players i basically uh when there's a real tournament i prepare for that and do that but i don't really you won't find me on mtgo because i just haven't basically i just haven't committed the time and money on mtgo to do that it's a lot all right so here's the deck list all right so i ran three gristle brands it's pretty standard run four and maybe in retrospect i should have ran four but i just didn't feel like it was really necessary because i had a lot of other little filler creatures as well but yeah i would have if i were rebuilding this deck and redoing it, i probably would run four obviously he's the big daddy you want to get gristle brand turn one maybe turn two with some some backup some setup that's always the dream um, and if that happens, generally you win because you get a fresh seven cards. You're just way ahead of your enemy. They obviously didn't have the turn one counter that they needed, etc., etc. That's how most games go with this. That's what you aim for, and that's how I won most of my matchups. Well, it wasn't always Crystal Brand. Sometimes it was something else, but it's some along those lines. I only ran two Archons of Cruelty. Really good card. Two seems to be fine. I ran an Ash and Rider. I don't know about this include. I didn't actually play it at all. There was always something more pressing it felt like. So I don't know if this is really a strong include or not. Um, but hey, I'm going over the deck list. So in retrospect, I probably wouldn't have this in the deck list. Villas was an all-star, I will say. Reanimating Villas is amazing. And I was also running one copy of Shallow Grave. So I was doing a lot of end of my opponent's turn shenanigans because you still get to swing with it on your turn if you do that but it, it's pretty good it's pretty good so villas did win some games definitely i kind of had him in instead of the fourth gristle brand was my thought at the time of building just sort of trying him out but yeah it feels really 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 strong i think it does belong in the deck as a one-up i play shieldred the uh, Apocalypse, just really strong once you start drawing with Villas or Gristle Brand. Uh, it's a strong card, and you also don't have to reanimate it, so that's nice. Another card I would probably cut um, now is the Grave Titan. I thought, well, the reason for this is because it goes wide. A lot of people were running, you know, four swords, four whatever. If your Gristle Brand can't land, or you go through all of them, at least with this, you get some zombies on the battlefield, and if it swings a few times, you get a ton of zombies. So. Grave Titan can just take over games. However, it didn't really perform. I would cut it um, now in retrospect, but I was trying to kind of have a bit of a variety here so that I could handle a lot of different metas potentially. And I also wanted to have a lot of things to swap out for the sideboard. Like Grave Titan was something that uh, is supposed to come out for game two or game three pretty much every time in place of something uh, more fitting in the sideboard. 
So that was kind of the plan with Grave Titan, really, uh, for me. Sarah's Emissary is a nice one include. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those cards that just wins games. You get it on the field, you name the right thing, and it's over. I also main decked Iona. I actually found this to be a solid choice. I normally don't main deck her. She's usually a great sideboard, but the reality is pretty much everybody's playing some main one color, blue or red. So there were just a lot of times when if you can get this out really quickly, or if you had it in your opening hand with a faceless looting or whatever instead of the gristle brand, um, getting this out and just naming their main color was a good game. It was over. That happened uh, several times in the tournament. So I actually kind of like her main deck in a, in a way because it's pretty safe to assume your opponent has force of will and force negation. And if they're not that, then they're probably mono red or something. So uh, naming blues oh, it seems to be always solid, even if you don't even know what you're opponents playing legacy well that's just my narrow opinion probably better than the sideboard grief the, i made a mistake here i ran one grief uh now you know after playing more and doing more research and etc cetera, etc cetera, i now think you should run a minimum of three griefs three or four is good uh one no not so much one doesn't really work you really just need this interaction on turn one or turn two to make sure your combo lands and your combo being basically reanimating gristle brand or uh Phyllis or something. So you really need more. And he's also a great backup plan because if you don't have anything to reanimate, at least grief goes to the yard and you can reanimate grief. And sometimes that can make a big difference. So uh, definitely, you know, in retrospect, cut the grave titan, cut the ashen rider, add two more griefs. Easy. You know, opposition agent. I really love opposition agent. This card was way stronger than I thought it would be. There were, there were several games where I just you know, turn one, I play a swamp pass, and uh, my opponent will take their turn. They go, if they go to crack a land, a uh, dark ritual opposition agent, <laughs> and you just steal their land drop. It's so brutal in Legacy with all the fetch lands. So, um, proved to be a little better than I really thought it would. I really, I really put a couple people in a pickle with this card. Um, so it was cool. Same with Magus of the Moon. Normally a sideboard card. I decided to run it main deck just because of the sheer number of times my single badlands or whatever got wastelanded and it was just rough so so in a lot of play testing um, people would just take me off my one or two lands and it would just make the game really hard because they would use that time where i was trying to get another land drop to continue on they would use that time to build up counters in their hand and stuff like that you know going against delver all the time so magus just kind of shut that off and it did seem to help some although i'll talk about this um i did have a misplay one of the games i lost one of the it should have been a win but i accidentally searched up a scrubland early on and i should have just searched up a swamp and magus shut off my scrubland because i needed two black to play a dothy and then helm them which is just a backup plan um Dothy, Helm, I'll bring those in if I don't think I can necessarily win with my reanimator strategy just to Helm them. And I, I went to do that, but I didn't have two black because I searched up a scrubland earlier for no good reason. It was just late in the day and I was tired and I was just like, oh, I found a land quickly. Let's just pick that one. But, you know, mistakes were made. Should have found a swamp instead. So, uh, yeah, we'll continue on and talk a little more. Now, this is kind of a weird thing you don't see much. I was kind of putting a little custom spin on this because in play testing, there were a few things that annoyed me. Um, so I only played three Lotus Petals. Basically, instead of one of the Lotus Petals, I just put in another Swamp because sometimes there were so many times where I was like, if this Lotus Petal was just another land, I'd be in so much better shape. But the Lotus Petal is obviously super good for turn one, turn two shenanigans. But if you're going into late game, uh, sometimes it's better to just hit a few more land drops. So that's why I ran three. Not necessarily advised. I think four is probably the right choice if you ask me in the long run. Four Animate Deads. No brainer. Obviously you need Animate Dead. It's one of the best reanimate spells ever. Four Reanimate. Super good. Yeah, you need it to pop off turn one basically. And that was generally the plan. To get one of the big boys in there and reanimate it. Or Animate Dead it. Whichever. Uh... For Faithless Looting, the only red card in the main deck. Uh, this is just so good for discarding, obviously, right? Um, do I even really need to explain this? You discard your big creatures, you play an animate thing on them. You can do it. You can do it turn one with a Lotus Petal and a Swamp um, if you have the rest of the right cards. So it just really, really enables the turn one uh, blow up or turn two. And it's also decent for sifting out your unused lands later because if with this deck you generally don't need more than like two lands three at the most uh, one is even fine so a lot of times you can just toss extra lands it's not really that much of card disadvantage 
because if you land your combo you're getting seven eight cards or however a ton of cards anyway so discarding a couple you might have needed isn't always a big deal as long as you can land your combo so obviously if you're playing faithless looting you got to run the four now I'm going to go on a little side tangent here. I tried a lot of different variations of this deck um, with cards other than Faithless Suiting to try to get it to work, and none of them seemed as consistent or they just seemed too slow for this particular combo because you really need this to happen turn one. Um, so, like, I tried Fable the Mirror Breaker in place of these with a few other changes, and it felt a little too slow, but not bad. It's just like you don't really need treasures, you don't really need to copy things. You just need to discard <laughs> and draw two. That's the only part you really need. Uh, so, uh, Fable doesn't seem quite as good here. I also tried this with some blue at one point and uh, Tainted Indulgence, uh, but that seemed like I'd have to change a bunch of other things and it was, uh, I didn't end up going with it. But just, I was trying to find something other than Faithless Looting that could work and I couldn't really find it. If you're going red, you gotta do the Faithless Looting, I think. All right, now I ran three Unmasks. I probably, in retrospect, would have ran four of these. Another, it's kind of like grief, except you can't reanimate it. But with Unmask, you can target yourself, although that's very expensive and costs you a lot of cards. Um, if you don't have the Faithless Looting and you're sitting on a Gristle Brand, sometimes you just gotta unmask yourself. Yeah, hopefully, they don't have interaction. You generally want it to get rid of their interaction, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I only ran two Exhumes. I probably should have ran four, you know, thinking about it now. Um, Exhume is fine. It's really good when you exhume your own Archon and they have to sack whatever they reanimated right away, but there are times when it's not necessarily ideal. Like if you're just exhuming your grief and they're getting a Delver or something, or it's something that swings back just as hard, it's kind of a wishy-washy spell at that point. But if they've got nothing in their yard, it's still, exhume's still great for popping off turn one when they don't have anything anyway. Uh, if you can dark ritual into like entomb exhume uh, or something, that's perfect. So, Exhume's still really good. Maybe I should have ran four. I'm thinking Thought Seize, kind of a no-brainer. I usually run two in the opening, bringing a third if required. Uh, so yeah, here we go. We got the four Entombs. Of course, you absolutely require. You gotta have four Entombs. Um, it's an instant. So, if they're running Force Negation, if you do this on their turn, they can't cheat the cost of Force Negation, because Force Negation reads, you can only pay its alternate cost when it's not your turn. So a nice way around Force Negation, um, temporarily at least, but all the reanimate spells are still sorcery speed, so it doesn't necessarily get around Force Negation super well, because they're just going to save it for later anyway, but at least you can get something to your yard. Three Dark Rituals, I went with the same... Uh, theory here for the lotus petals instead of running four i just ran an extra land and i think in this case it was maybe the mountain or i may have done may have done a mountain instead of the lotus petal or a swamp instead of the dark ritual but a lot of times in a lot of mashups i would take out a swamp and i would take out a mountain and i would add something else i needed like two dothies or something or the greed or something along the, those lines uh, plague engineer he's on the sideboard all right so there's a one shallow grave i basically put in place of an exhum all right, the land base, there's the land base. Pretty straightforward, some fetches, bad lands, some swamps. That's basically it. You basically fetch for a bad lands and faithful saluting, or if you've got the entomb line, you fetch for a swamp, the running wastelands. Yikes, uh, I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about this land base. It's fine though. It's probably a little too many lands if we're being honest. So that's that's the only thing I think about it. All right, and there's my sideboard, you know, two serenity to, to wipe. Uh, artifacts and enchantments never came up as I just played Delver over and over against Delver and over and over. Same with Wear and Tear, never came up because once again it was just instants and creatures all day. Uh, seven rounds in a row, it wasn't really anything to wear and tear. Not a single person tried to shut off my graveyard. All they did was Force of Will, Force of Negation, Days, Delver of Secrets, and uh, DRC. That's all I saw for like a full eight hours straight. I I'm not annoyed. You're annoyed. <laughs> All right. Helm of Obedience. I thought it was fun with the Dothy. It was really just a fun side con, win con. Mask Curve Worm. Um, this was generally for like Infect and a little maybe against some certain other decks. Didn't really come into play. Uh, Plague Engineer. Uh, this, was, this was mainly for Elves. Same with Mask Curve Worm. Those, these are both for Elves basically. And there were a few other variants where they would help like against humans or something. But didn't see much of that. Uh, the Pack Rat. I thought this might be good against control. It's also another way to discard things, but the price is too much. You gotta pay two to even cast it, and then you gotta discard with three more mana. It didn't really seem like it was quite good enough ever, but I didn't ever side it in. 
just thought there might be some games where I want to play this instead of something like a, instead of maybe a Faithless Looting. I, I'm not sure. I didn't really end up using it though. Uh, Grief came in all the time. Thought Seize came in quite frequently. They're good against counters. Well, that's the deck. That's the deck. I went three and four. If I played a little better, I probably would have went five and two and been in the top 16 pretty easily. Uh, there were definitely, there was definitely one round I absolutely lost due to a mistake. That Scrubland fetch one I was talking about, 100% lost that. So I would have been four and four right there uh, if I won that properly. Uh, and, or four and three rather, which would have put me really close to a finish. And there was one other match that was really, really close that I think I could have pulled off if I played a little smarter, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. So there's a good chance I could have went five and two but I definitely should have went at least five or four and three, which isn't the worst, especially for kind of being a newcomer and playing a deck like this, kind of a janky deck. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. Though. Okay, so I was just searching, trying to find the recap video, and I saw just other people posting. Yeah, Brian Koval was there. I saw him. I didn't play against him or even talk to him, but I saw him there. Um, let's see. Uh, Roland Chang. This is the guy that I accidentally fetched the Scrubland against and ended up losing the game. I actually almost cheated because I, I tried to play the Dothy and forgot that I had my Magus of the Moon out. And then I was like, mill you. And he was like, all right, that's it. And then we started to pick up our cards and he was like, oh, wait, you got Magus. Can you even cast it? And I was like, oh, never mind. No, I can't. <laughs> So uh, it was a goofy game. We resolved it. Roland ended up taking the crown, as he should have for my goofy mistake. I, well, yeah, if I played super well, I should have won. But since I made a mistake, I don't really feel that bad for losing. Well, I feel bad for making the mistake, but I don't feel bad for giving the win. I feel like Bri uh, Roland deserved the win, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know hardly any of these people. So some of them are like really well known in the legacy space and... I'm just an unknown, so it's kind of funny for them to play against somebody and then just get absolutely demolished very quickly. And that's what the reanimator does to people. It very much demoralizes people. So I was demoralizing some old school players that had high hopes in like the first few rounds. And it was, uh, you know, I was keeping it inside, but inside I was very happy about demoralizing people because that means I'm winning, right? All right, here we are. I'm going to mute the audio on their end because it's very hard to, uh, it cuts in and out a lot. We're, me and the guy I'm playing, we were one and one. We both had one win under our belt here. And we were going for game three and they asked if we wanted to be up here for game three. They'll correct the name shortly. But, uh, yeah, so I'm playing up against Matt Brown and he's playing a spicy Delver list will say it's I don't know what exactly is going on with it but it's definitely Delver and uh you know I feel like my deck's kind of 50 50 ish on Delver <laughs> so it's not really what I wanted to play all day it's just the turn one counters and dazes and stuff okay I messed up the recording so I'm I'm redoing this <laughs> uh that's this is delaying the video because when I went to edit it I realized I didn't get this entire part of me talking over this. Okay, so this is me on the right, and this is uh, my opponent, Matt Brown, on the left. He's playing a Delver list. Um, something, some interesting homebrew. I'm obviously playing Reanimator. Uh, you guys know that, but I'm just going to kind of walk through the game here. So let's go. We draw our seven. We look at our opening hands. Uh, we both keep. I go first, um, since he won the last round, or one and one. I play first turn in Tomb. I just basically want to see if he has a counter to use on this and see if I need to go to plan B. He does not counter it. I don't remember exactly my hand, but I'm pretty sure I had like a faithless looting to go dig for more stuff if I needed. So I get Gristlebrand, put him in the yard. And then um, after he cuts, I play a Lotus Petal. He says, okay, I crack it for mana and play a reanimate targeting the Gristlebrand. This prompts response from Matt Brown. He plays uh, Force Negation, exiling his Hydro Blast and goodbye reanimate so that was my turn one combo there you know I had to check him into it because why well, he can't daze so he plays an island i know daze is online i don't know if he's holding the daze but that was my big plan i had the turn one i had to go for it it's as you do i wish i had some kind of discard to go with it that would have really sealed the deal but when you have it you got to go for it so i pick up a bad lands here and uh, then i play a faithless looting and i pitch two more creatures and pass the turn not having anything to reanimate opponent uh draws uh plays a land plays a brainstorm i say okay 
and that's all he does. Um, I play another land after drawing, and I flash back my Faithless Looting from the yard there, and he says okay. So I draw two, and I discard two lands. So I've got a lot of stuff in the graveyard. I have Archon, I have Villas, I have Gristlebrand. Obviously I just need some reanimation spells, which is what I'm digging for uh, with these Faithless Looting casts. And, um, let's see what happens. Opponent fetches at the end of my turn, and uh, draws their card, plays an expressive iteration, just rips it, and uh, finds, I think, a land, or a lightning bolt to exile, prismatic vista to crack, something like that. Or he gets a prismatic vista, gets a mountain, lightning bolts me immediately with it, and it's just tapped out. So I'm thinking, okay, this is my turn, all I just gotta play around is days, and maybe a force of will, force negation, but I think his hand is light, so I'm hoping I get it this turn, I believe. And I do, I get it, I get the exhume, I believe right off the top, I don't remember, I might have drew it on Facebook. But this does prompt a force of will, which I sort of expected, he's got a pitch and expressive iteration. This is a lot of his gas, or a lot of his anti-gas, I don't know, whatever you call counters. So I got, you know, you gotta try when it looks like you might be able to. Um, he plays another land over there, hold on, let's see here, I don't wanna see this play by play. He just plays another land and passes, I untap, draw. And I play Shallow Grave, instant speed. I don't know why I did this. Shallow Grave's an instant. I, you know, in retrospect, rewatching this, I should have done it at the end of Matt's turn uh, because this has a beginning of the end step trigger. So if you wait, if you play it after the beginning of the end step on your opponent's turn, you get to swing with it and have it all turn. And it's uh, also you get to untap with it, which means you know a lot of things. Basically, they have to use their counter on their turn, and uh, their options are lower. But I just jammed at sorcery speed. I think I was, I think I was uh, deciding that my opponent didn't have a counter. Basically, I was uh, like, okay, he's used so many counters. What are the odds he has more? Kind of deal. And he's discarded a lot of stuff. So I was just putting pressure on. Basically, if any of these landed, I would have won. Was how it was gonna go. So, but yeah, I should have played it as an end step. Anyways, he plays Snapcaster in response, grabbing a brainstorm. Looking at some cards. See, I see now. Sorry about that. I see now that he had a force of will in hand and was just digging for good stuff to discard or something. But he force of wills, discarding force of will. Didn't find anything much better. But that's, I really wanted to see that. To see two force of wills go. <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, this is looking good. This is looking good. Eventually one of these reanimate spells is going to land. It's kind of what I was thinking here, but he did get uh, the Snapcaster on the board, so I'm on a little bit of a clock now. Not too big of a deal, really, I don't think. So, you know, he swings, passes back. I draw, and I pass back. I'm looking for more stuff. That draws, swings, passes. I draw, play a Faithless Looting. It resolves. I pitch uh, two more creatures, uh, Sarah's Emissary and Archon of Cruelty. Play a no another Badlands, and pass. And uh, we get an expressive iteration here on Matt's side. He uh, decides what to do. It looks like he keeps a land to play and puts something into his hand. Then he plays a Ponder, digging for some cards. Keeps one, swings for two, passes back. Uh, I go to my turn, I play Reanimate. I have to decide what to target. My life is now at 10, so Reanimate's gonna burn me. I need something that's gonna kind of uh, not kill me. So this is, I don't know, I'm in a state of desperation here, I guess, with the reanimation. But there is a Cabal Therapy on the Archon. I chose Archon because it would heal me as soon as it came in and get rid of the Snapcaster Mage and make him discard. It seemed like a good choice because it would, it would take me down to two, but then I'd go up to five. However, in retrospect, I see a Bone Crusher Giant here. He should have let me go down to two with that trigger on the stack. He could have killed me, but he chose a different route. Um... But yeah, after getting Force of Willed that many times, it's kind of a, it's kind of a long shot. Anyways, he does resolve the Cabal Therapy. He gets to see my hand. I got another Entomb and a Petal. Stuff I don't really need. And he digs, and there's only two Archons, so uh, it's fine. So after that, I, I'm going to flashback Faithless Looting, I think. Is that what I did? Oh, it's a Flusterstorm. Okay. I was wondering why I didn't discard. It's because uh, he countered it with Flusterstorm. Yep, that'll do it. So, it was his turn. He plays a Ponder, or a Preordain, rather. He's one, swings, passes, clock still on. I top deck, and a Plague Engineer, and I name humans. Uh, 
Humans are about every creature type and Delver other than the big boy, Big Daddy Delver, Murktide. Anyways, he bolt, bolt, and stomps me, uh, bringing it home for Matt Brown. He beats me 2-1. That was the third match. And, uh, you know, it was a good game. I don't know if I could have beat him. I maybe could have played this round a little better. It was hard. He played really well, I thought, as far as uh, keeping me off my, my big threats, stop my turn one threat. But this was my game plan the whole time, was just immense pressure starting out from turn one. <laughs> and it, I think it was a lot of fun. All right. Uh, now that I re-recorded this and put in double the work, please like the video and subscribe and stuff. All right, well, I've got to wrap this up. It was a uh, really, really, really great games against Matt. He's a great guy. <laughs> I, I was amazed at how much Matt talked to me about introspective things. Like, I, I think he was mostly just mind games, but there were a lot of times where he was just, like, talking out loud whatever what the play was. He, and it was, like, kind of throwing me off a bit. Um... But yeah, super cool guy, great game. Everyone I played against was super cool. It's just, this was the only one that got recorded. So that was one of my losses right there. And it was, uh, I think Matt Brown ended up going somewhere in top 16. I don't remember exactly. I'd have to look at the list. You could look too, it's public. Yeah, overall, great time at the Brew Dog there in uh, Columbus, Ohio, playing Legacy. Uh, who knows where we'll do it next, but I plan on going to the next one and competing again. Um, Let's see, I think I got one more photo. Yeah, I don't know. I was just, just getting some evidence that I was <laughs> guess. All right, I don't know what else to say at this point. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this sort of video. Yeah, let me know if you want to see more stuff like this when I play in big tournaments. Hopefully I have a little better luck in the next one. I don't know. It wasn't all luck, but I'm very happy overall. It's just the way it goes, at least for me. In competitive events, I always look back very critically on how I played and every little thing. You know, it's just just the competitiveness in me I guess but overall I'm very happy with everything it was a great experience no regrets um yeah all right peace out guys keep playing magic and legacy I guess see ya